Hey guys, welcome back here to Bunny Thumper again. So I know it's been a little bit of a while. I kind of needed to build a new PC and whatnot. So we're going to be building the Big Red 250. She's going to be the budget build. We're going to be continuing on. I'm a little bit sick at the moment, but don't worry. Money will be cracking on and building some bikes. So hopefully you guys are doing well. I'm going to compile everything here now. You'll get caught up to where I'm to. So I kind of got the bike built. And we're going to continue on and see what we end up with on this video. Let me know what you guys think and uh, hopefully hope you enjoy watching. So see you guys again shortly. So we're out here in the shed again. It is absolutely freezing out today, so we got the little heater going. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the 250s, but I just want to show you guys a couple things I noticed. This is pretty cool. It actually says, uh, you can see reverse, neutral, uh, super low. So it actually says super low. So I usually, I used to think that these had like a first gear, like um, you just click up, this goes to first, but it's super low, and then you go up to the rest of the gears. As per written on it, pretty cool. I'm still working on cleaning. You can see it's a little bit, a little bit difficult to get some of this grime off. I'm after like wire wheeling it and stuff. I need to get a new boot because this one's tore. But on the other side as well, just so you guys see, it's pretty cool. Down here we got our reverse and neutral switch. You can see that's still dirty too. It's actually a nice bit of time and effort to get an engine clean. I got this degreased wire wheel down. Uh, I'm gonna try putting a bit of alcohol on it to clean it, so we'll see what happens there. So I'm gonna be painting this engine black. I got some paint there my buddy advised to get because he's after painting a lot of engines with it, and it turned out really well, so that's pretty sweet. Oh, cool, look, it actually gives you the cylinder volume right there. 246 centimeters cubed, sweet. You get the vent up top, deadly. All right, let's see if we can get this cleaner than what it is, and then we'll, uh, Get it all ready and prepped for paint. Hopefully get it painted in the next couple days. Hey guys, so we're up back here at Muddy Thumper. Show you what you guys, or show you what I'm up to here. I got this engine half painted, still curing. I spent a lot of time cleaning all the dirt off this. You can see it's starting to look pretty cool. It's starting to look nice and clean, eh? Still curing, so all the glass and stuff that's gonna start fading away. It's gonna be all like more like flat black freezing out so I got the heater here parked in front of it but yeah guys hope you're all doing well and get ready for Christmas and whatnot I uh, haven't had a whole lot of time here lately um, to go pick up some stuff to start working on this but once this engine's done I got the frame over here she's parked on top of Big Thunder that's the frame I'll paint it up that's good to go so literally once it's fully cured probably give it a day or two we will be throwing it in the frame and we will be building a bike. So we've got a lot of work cut out for me. You can see I've lots of parts here. Um, the wire harness has some issues, so we'll be going through all that. Probably do a video on how to troubleshoot, how to wire a big red 250. And we're gonna be building the bike as per usual. So I uh, have another swing iron given to me. This one was given to me because there's a weld right here, but other than that, she's a solid swing arm, so. I'll certainly always take spare parts. As you can tell, I have a couple of rear ends and stuff down here. Eventually, I'm gonna have a nice organized shelving system and the engines are gonna be stored down here and it's gonna be hidden away. Like, it's gonna be all fully enclosed. And you won't, it won't look as messy. But yeah, guys, let's see what work we can get done in this video. I'm gonna get this engine all done up. You guys seen a couple clips, I was wire wheeling it down. Big, the big wire wheel I bought earlier that actually made a huge difference. I used rubbing alcohol to degrease it. I used degreaser, didn't rubbing alcohol. So I did a bunch of different stuff. It's starting to look pretty nice. It's not perfect. I got the, the ear intake boot, the, the cover off, and the foot exhaust as well, because I'm basically done painting now. If I gotta do any touch-ups, we'll do some touch-ups. Yeah, guys, all right, let's see uh, what happens with this video now. Hopefully we'll get the frame in and we'll get the swing arm in. I need to pick up this type of bearings for the swing arm. As you can see, it takes little tiny bearings. I'm gonna have a look at these now. We'll have an inspection of them and just get an idea. I don't know what these bearings are like, but if I can pick them up locally at like an automotive store, I'd rather do that because it'd be way cheaper. <laughs> right, hey guys, so I just wanna show you a little hack as well with these uh, swing arms. So, um, 
as you guys know, they have these huge Allen key. I actually have it alone with a proper tool because basically um, it fits in here during rubbing on like that side will be rubbing on a bearing on the inside. But you see how huge that is? An Allen key that big, 17 mils, usually have expensive. They have a little uh, muddy thumper heck. I'm gonna weld this together, but uh, as you can see, watch. It actually fits perfect. All that is is a random bolt and a lug nut. I think it's off a four wheeler. But yeah, super simple, it's a little heck if you don't wanna spend any money on tools. If you got a lug nut that fits in here really snug, but like you can have it loose, as you can see. Weld it up and you got a little uh, bolt removal tool. Like I got the proper swing arm bolt, the like, gum um, or a proper swing arm Allen key, but just a little heck, get you out of a jam. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna weld that up anyways, and uh, we'll see how it works out in the future. So guys, this was the swing arm that was in the parts book originally. I'm actually not a big fan of the welds. Now, as long as it don't leak, realistically, it's still not a big deal. I might actually use the other swing arm that I was given because it's not as ugly as this one. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead. Let's learn how this comes apart. It looks pretty straightforward. We got a nut there, a nut there. It pops the hubs out. We can see that this section of the axle has normally four bolts, but looks like one's missing. This is bolted on, I'd say four bolts there. When you take the shock off, that's pretty straightforward. And then we got our bolts here. Not too much, eh? And look, the bolts right here, that holds the differential to the swing arm. So even though I haven't worked on a big red 250 before, they are still the same thing. So let's go ahead and let's start taking stuff, stuff apart. I'm gonna take these nuts off. The hubs are loose anyways, so it shouldn't be hard to get these off. Um, take the tubing off, tubing here. We'll have a look. I don't really know what the bearings in here looks like, so I'll take you guys along as basically as someone new because I am new to these swing arms, so we're going to find out now. We're going to learn a bit. So yeah guys, I just literally got the last bolt pretty loose here now. Let's go ahead and get this housing off. This is all get painted up, as you can tell, it's pretty ugly. Well, at least there's grease in there. It is pretty dirty, as you can see. But, oh well, it's not too bad. I've certainly seen worse, like that 200 ES I scrapped not that long ago for parts. That thing was shot, even the bottom end. <laughs> Is that, well, there's a bolt broke off there. We'll get there, our welder there, and um, that's why it's missing one, because somebody broke one off. But that's no big deal. I got the MIG there. We'll, there. we'll weld on a nut, we'll back that out. That's not a big deal. As well, I don't know if I've mentioned to you guys before, anytime you're working on dirty old rusty stuff like this, PB Blaster goes a long way. So, you know what this one says, PB Blaster. But this is the Mega Can Industrial PB Blaster. Sprayed on any bolts and nuts, it does help drastically. I've used it on trucks, on vehicles. It's always good. But we'll have a look here now. Let's get this back in the hole. Come on. All right, we'll take that drum housing off and I have a feeling that this axle will go. Yeah, I'll take the drum housing off here next. As you can tell, she's in there pretty well. I actually have a spare one of these axles too. I bought one of the big red 250, somebody gave me one, so we have a spare at least. Let's go ahead, take that drum housing off right there. So it wasn't really what I expected, but after I let these four bolts go, they're all like 17 mils. You guys can see, I think I take that nut off. I was using that because I was tapping on it. All right, you can see it actually pulls right out. As you guys can see, looks like the engine's pretty cured. I'm pretty happy with this paint job. It's all flat black, as you can tell. Looks like she's all hardened. Now with this type of paint, where it is an engine paint, it will uh, harden and cure even further when it is running and it starts to heat up and stuff. Like the paint will actually bake in there. But not bad, eh? Uh, $20, Canadian dollar, <laughs> $20 paint job. Best kind, huh? Pretty good. All right guys, so I got a few things we're gonna be working on here now. We're gonna clean up the swing arm, 
and we're gonna clean up the shock and a few things and then very soon we'll be uh, assembling. Uh, painting the swing arm got the back shock here third piece of the axle housing it's not gonna be perfect but letting it dry here now it's all wet it's gonna should dry flat and then i'm gonna glass coat it over just with a clear coat but not bad not bad we got a lot of the rust off and we're getting all cleaned up so it's better than what it was and yeah it's best kind so we got the hardest part done i never scratched up too bad scuffed the little uh, frame up on the top of it not big deal, one little scuff. Uh, so this is in here now. Let's go grab all the bolts, Let's clean up all the, the nuts and bolts, bolt this engine in, and then we're gonna look into getting the swing arm bolted on. Let's get the rear end back together, and then we're gonna throw the forks on, get her back into a roller. Okay guys, that didn't take very long. We got the front bolts on, top bolts are tight there, that back bolts on, and the bottom bolts. So that's all it is to that. We're gonna go ahead now, and uh, I'm gonna make up a redneck tool. Little, that little thing there I showed you with the lug nut and the bolt and we're going to go ahead and put the, the braces in and the bearings in and the caps for the swing arm because I, I did buy the proper kit it was like 40 bucks or so at local Honda you can still get the bearings so I'm going to get the swing arm in the bike we'll get the shock in the bike get that exhaust on the bike and then uh, we're going to circle back to the rear end I'm going to paint up the differential housing I'm not going to do the bearings for it I'm going to do it at a later date because I did check them out. There's not much slop in them at all. So uh, probably going to fill up a gear wall and run it the way it is. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's get the swing arm in place. And hope, hopefully in the next day or two, we'll have this as a roller. So looking pretty good, though. I like it. I'm happy with that paint job on the tank or on the engine. I was overlooking at the tank earlier. The boy's doing a good job. It's not, it's not perfect. As he mentioned, he's kind of like me. We do the best we can with what we got. No perfectionist or anything. But it is what it is. Just another project. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get the swing arm in. Okay, so we got the swing arm bearings in. It wasn't too hard. Just uh, use a chisel to pop out the races. And he slides in place. Uh, you can see I have a new engine boot. I've got to throw that on here now before it messes around with the swing arm. Just make sure I have uh, some room. This is off a 2005 Foreman 500. So if you guys need, I'll actually throw the part number down below. And... Uh, if you guys be able to get those i got this 14 bucks at honda brand new as you can tell so i'm going to throw that down there now i think it's going to fit looks basically the same to what i had slightly different so let's put that on and then let's bolt this swing arm in place okay guys so we're out here making a mess like usual so this is what i'm at i got the drum housing painted up got some paint on that rear diff this housing i need to do the other piece for the drum like with the actuator on it and knock the bearings out but that's done. This is all covered up here because I had the wire wheel going earlier. She's starting to look up. She's starting to look a bit spiffy. So yeah, I'm going to let this all cure. The only other thing i got to do is the, the drum housing. I'll go grab it show you guys. I don't want to miss. This is what always happens when you're working on projects. Uh, as you can tell, that's pretty much the way the, way the diff looked as well. And uh, the hubs and stuff. So all this is getting cleaned up. I'm gonna get some new bearings tomorrow and then this is all gonna be all nice and spiffy and silver like the other stuff you're just looking at and yeah we should be building that bike soon i am gonna go over now and start taking the front fender off take the front wheel off so you guys can come join me over here now so it's definitely a good night to be out hanging out in the shed hiding away because it's like freezing cold out so let's get this wheel off nothing to it it looks basically the same thing as 200m we got bolts right here bolts down here for the wheel and i'm gonna take off the fender take off that front rack and we'll get this all shaped up the tire's not too bad i like this tire i think it was a duro yeah duro 25 by 12 by 9 they're usually nice tires because they're not too hard like they got a nice bit of flex to them but yeah guys let's go ahead and let's get the forks all cleaned up I do need to order a set of shock boots, so the bike might be built and some little things like that might have to come back to afterwards. No big deal. I like to get the bike done first. Ooh, we got a plug down there, that kind of sucks. I do have a few spare wheels kicking around, so maybe one of those will have to go on. I don't 
don't like plugs. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and take this off or take all this apart. This is the first day I actually got a little bit of time now, so as I spent probably three hours or so. We got all that stuff over here painted, a bunch of stuff cleaned up. Uh, I got the front end ready to be poked at. So, yeah, I'm probably going to crack on with the front end here now, including this front tire, because realistically, I don't have all the bearings to stick the back end together. So if I can get the front end together, get these new bearings, it'll be in pretty good, in good shape. Oh yeah, got two ones on the go now. Okay, so we got all the bearings out. These are for the outer housing on the rear end. They are off this little drum housing right here. There was two of them stacked together. And little tiny ones are from the front. So I'm gonna assume that these are the same size, but we'll bring them over to the bearing store tomorrow, see if the boss can get me some same ones. And see if we can get some new seals as well. And um yeah, be back rolling. The bearings look actually half new. You can tell, like, they're not horrible looking. Now, those ones that were in the rear end, they were really bad. But, here's the before for this piece anyways. This is going to be all nice and shiny in, uh, in a little bit. So this stuff is basically done. I'm happy with that. I need to get a new seal for that drum housing, which is going to be fun. Because, uh, apparently it's discontinued. But as you guys can see, I got the forks just draw in here. You can see this is going to be an army tan color. I got some stuff painted with the silver aluminum style paint. It's pretty shiny. See what happens. It's going to be for drawing, cure, and all that whatnot. Got the front rack painted up. First coat. Same with the battery. The little battery holder. So I'm going to let this all cure and give it all another coat. Some clear coat. And then we are ready to start assembling. I got new rear bearings and everything. So where it's cold and I got the wood stove going here and I got the heater over there going it's probably gonna be two or three days for this to cure no big deal we'll get this all clear coated hopefully in the next day or two and um, we'll start building a bike I right, cleaned this up really well this is actually in good shape this front rack so that's nice battery box wasn't too bad uh, this is some of the stuff it's the rear housing I think that's the front cover. Yeah, that's got to be the front cover. That's the spare one I got that uh, came with the parts bike, so that's good. The other one was missing the lever. Shock trowel coated over. You can see that one's a bit scuffed up. That's all we can do there. And I got like a broken stud or two, so I'm going to circle back in the future, and we're going to fix that. All right, guys, let's uh, let this all cure here now, and I'm going to evacuate and let all this paint fumes go elsewhere because I'm trying not to get high out here. All right. <laughs> See you shortly. So we're just here greasing everything up. Just a little note if you're sticking the rear end in. You might want to put the drive shaft in ahead of time. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> no big deal. Basically waste an extra five minutes. I gotta pull the swing arm, put the drive shaft in, grease all that up. Grease up right in here as well. And uh, back together. So yeah, make sure you got the drive shaft in because apparently it doesn't want to slide in the way I had imagined in my head. No big deal. So we're still in the shed here. We're just uh, sticking this rear end back together. You can see it's just a couple bolts. I never had any luck getting that one bolt out in the aluminum housing that's broke off. So we're just going to run it the way it is. But pretty much just the opposite. So we got this, once we got the drive shaft and the swing arm in, um, put the bolt diff on to the swing arm. I got the outer housing on here. I'm going to put the other side on now. And then it's just a matter of the hubs. And then we're back to uh, fully together. I'm not filming a whole lot because this is actually a really greasy job. I have everything blocked and blocked in grease. And my degreaser, like the hand degreaser, is actually frozen at the moment. So I'm trying to limit how many times I have to clean my hands off. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bolt on that other housing over there. I'm going to put the drum and stuff in place for the brakes, which is pretty straightforward. Just a couple bolts and slides on. Uh, the brakes I'm going to have to do a work around and come back to that for the time being because I have a bunch of stuff ordered. But I'm going to go ahead and just assemble everything anyways because I want to have a rolling chassis over the next day or two and continue on from there. So I can always go back and like 
do the rear end like the actual differential gears in the future there's no big deal but for now let's go ahead and just put stuff back together uh, so i'm out here in the shed again trying to clean up some of the mess i got i hate working in a mess <laughs> it's never good especially if you're trying to be working on stuff but here she is this is the old girl she is coming alive got a gear shifter on her she's all pretty much painted up still fully dusty but don't mind that this is the color that i'm going to be going with so you guys can see that look she is going to be army tan you might be wondering why army tan well I'm not, i wasn't doing this bike red i wanted to do a different color as you can see she's tanned here at the moment and um yeah the cans are actually on clearance two bucks per can and it's a good quality paint so i was like well i wanted to do army green maybe or black and then uh seen the tan so can't go wrong with it i think it looks pretty cool what do you guys think now i'm going to be sticking this together starting to assemble i gotta wait for all the paint to dry in the front end there uh the front shocks i am going to be replacing those i got a buddy that's actually going to give me a set of shocks and it just needs to be basically rebuilt like the oil and stuff and take them apart no big deal we'll do a video on that <clears throat> yeah guys she is coming together so waiting for this to cure now and while this is drying i am gutting the garage as you can tell i have a huge mess going on here so this is all going to be dealt with very shortly <laughs> you can see i even got like a new uh pipe bender over here never even used that yet i've got to find a nice home for it i'm going to have a shop press eventually i think i'm going to stick it over in that corner when this is all tidied up here now in a minute yeah pretty cool eh bikes getting built uh some of the parts didn't really want to go together like those hubs they're 85 and some parts i got are 86 um the front end was a bit of annoyance or annoyance to get together that triple clamp was bent i had to bend it to fit and make it work so she's coming together she's not going to be my best build of course because the 250 in here that one's getting cleanly built this one is just going to be a project bike and fun little trail bike and beater bike all right guys let's go ahead now and uh start getting this all cleaned up out here and we're gonna stick this back together okay so i got the bike parked starting to dry it's looking pretty cool so i'm just cleaning it up still you can see just by moving some stuff look at all the space i can free up so eventually when it has my shelves here and this is all going to be fully enclosed it's going to be pretty nice for storing parts i'm going to insulate and paint all the garage floor over there as well before i fully enclose it so that'll be all sealed but yeah get some progress done anyways the garage is still not fully cleaned up but i'm starting to lay the, all the parts out now and uh, have them kind of spaced out because i am getting ready to start sticking that bike back together um i think the carb is over here yeah the carbs here we got a couple wire harnesses a bunch of random stuff throw it all back together and we should have her back ready to rock sweet Okay guys, so I'm out here in the shed again. Just want to show you guys, this is how the tank turned out. And the front fender. I am a big fan of the color. I think she's looking pretty cool, or pretty slick. What do you guys think? Pretty mean, eh? She is coming along. Uh, we have to fix the other side of the tank. There's a bit of a crack there at the moment, so it'll get repaired. And she'll look just as good as this side. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead now. The front is all together. I have to paint the, the housing for the headlights here now. I'm going to pull the tank back off, get that out of the way, and put the exhaust on. We're going to put on the wire harness and um, the carburetor, airbox, all that good stuff. And we're actually getting pretty far into this build. I still have to put on like uh, a bunch of stuff over here. As you can see, I have a huge mess going on. But no big deal get this piece as well we'll get her all together here now but not bad what? for the low patch bike she is coming back alive okay so not much to put in the header on we got a bolt there on top a uh, bolt on the bottom bottom one is a stud the uh, top one actually came out all the way so i'm just putting the bolt back in there along same thread so it's gonna go under nice all right so i'm just gonna snug this up and then uh We'll get to some more stuff in the, I guess, like the air box and whatnot. All right, so I guess you guys don't need to watch me tighten up two bolts. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I do apologize for sounding pretty sick because I still am a bit sick. But um, hopefully you guys are doing well and enjoy the videos. You can see with this video, it's kind of an overview. It's everything we've been working on with the bike. So we did a lot of stuff to it. She's back to a roller. Right now she don't have any sparks. So the next video, guys, you'll see me go through all the harness. And we're going to see if we can get it running because right now she's not running at the moment. So I'm hoping we'll get her running. I don't think we're going to have much trouble there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. It's good to be making videos again. If you're new to the channel, I do appreciate if you give it a like and a subscribe there. It helps keep me motivated because my channel's kind of the underdog of YouTube. I'm just the, the redneck who drinks beer in the shed and likes working on things. Alright guys, see you again soon. Take care.